What's going on guys? Back at the range today. Don't be freaked out. Yes, that's two bipods. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Alright guys, so this may not be a video you would have expected from me, but as I'm getting into uh, more planking with the Ruger Precision, as I've built this whole thing up, I'm, I'm doing some things that I feel like just aid in the precision of the rifle, or me shooting if I did want to get into, you know, 22 precision competitions, or just some sort of long distance shooting as I'm setting this thing up. So. You'll see here I got two bipods, and we'll talk about why I'm doing that. Uh, I want to talk about the differences between just a standard bipod that's going to be attached underneath the bottom or on the sides, like this M-Lock version is on the side of the RPR rail. But the main thing I'm switching to and what we're talking about today is the overbore bipod. And what advantages you get with the overbore versus something like this you see attached to the side or attached to the bottom. Uh, so let's talk about why I'm doing this and why you might want to switch to something overbore like this. All right, so what you're limited to in something like this versus an overbore or something, something similar, uh, but this you'll see a lot of people doing long distance shooting. They use the really wide stance overbore bipods because you're getting a wider stance, so more stability there. But there's also... Uh, I don't want to say more adjustment, but more versatility of this bipod, this style of bipod, versus something that's just pretty basic like this M-Lock attached uh, bipod here, or something that goes just straight underneath that has doesn't have a, as wide of a spread. So you'll probably be familiar with ones like by Magpul that you'll know, mount underneath. Uh, this one here is a UTG item I've had on this gun for probably a couple years now. Um, I liked it because I didn't want to go straight underneath mount. I wanted a little bit wider of a stance to give you that more stability, right? I mean, that's the idea. More stable, better shots. You know, that's the idea. So I went with this, and, and these are not uh, too terribly expensive. I mean, UTG products, I find, in any time I've had a UTG product, um, it's been fine for my application. Um, quality stuff, aluminum stuff uh, seems to be, um, you know, produced well. So I went with this, never had a problem with this. But I want to step the game up. And I wanted to go with an overbore. So it just so happens UTG also makes an overbore. And I really like this one because, yes, overbores and a bipod like this is going to be more expensive. This is like, you know, a couple hundred bucks versus, you know, 50 bucks-ish around there. So you're saying, well, see, why am I going to spend a few hundred dollars on a bipod? Well, for the reasons I just mentioned, more stability, better for long distance shooting, getting set up, um, but also the adjustability or the versatility of it. So all you're getting with this style of bipod is just straight. Um, there is no, there's no movement. If I want to move it, I move the whole gun. So the whole bipod and everything moves. Now, why that could be a problem is if you're not on a, an even surface or a level surface, maybe you're on the ground, you know, you find your spot, um, you're, you're stuck with trying to make the gun as level as possible with just the legs. And all you have is the adjustment of the up and down. So yeah, you could have this on two and this one on three to make you level or make you even. But as soon as you might need to move from one target to the other, that whole the bipod is moving across the ground, so you're not you're going to lose your point. You're going to lose your, lose your stable point, and you're not going to be level, and that that could throw your shot, right? So this is this has been fine for me because usually I'm shooting on something like this. I'm on a bench or I'm on you know a flat surface, and I'm just planking. But uh, if I'm really trying to get serious and really want to make this uh, that much cooler, because cool is a thing, a vibe is a thing, um, I wanted to step it up and really do something different. So. Let's talk about the advantages to the overboard. You can see much, much wider than just the bipod I had on attached to the side. You get a much bigger sprawl. I don't even know if that's the right word for this, but I'm saying sprawl because it's a wide spread. Much bigger sprawl, and then you have, uh, depending on what size you get, you have more um, of a height um, than this one is. Now, you can get bigger, just standard bipods, um, but with that longer spread, 
you know, you get a more steady and even platform. What you don't get out of a regular bipod, you get out of this, is now you found your stable spot, you know where you need to be. Now, if you need to transition the targets, you can now do that because it has that swivel. It has a certain degree of left to right movement. So now, if you're going from one target here, you need to transition, you've not lost your point on the ground or on the platform, wherever you're at. You can just go left to right, and you still have a little bit of your up and down too, just as, as the bi bipod permits there. But the left and the right uh, adjustability there is, I think, a really important part of if you're going to be doing any sort of, you know, precision shooting, distance shooting to be quick and not have to actually, oh, I got to move targets, pick up your whole gun, set it down, and now you're off to the next target. But see, if you're in a spot, if you're in prone even, prone even worse, if you're in prone and all of a sudden now you got to pick the whole gun up and move it, that's a problem. You know, it's, it's less, more time you're taking to get back on target. So being able to lay there and just kind of shimmy over, shift over, uh, just by throwing your legs and just shifting your body and then turning the gun is a big, is a big deal. Next advantage, not just the side to side, not just the side to side move, but now you also have uh, what I'm just going to call a twist. So now you can twist the gun a certain degree. You have that capability there because now maybe, maybe you're trying to get the most level shot you can. And maybe for whatever reason, the bipod can't get you the adjustment that you need to be level. Now, if you're a little off level, maybe the bipod shifted, something happened, and you don't want to be shooting on a, on a weird cant, now you have that little bit of adjustment to now you can just twist it up to get as level as you can. And if you have a scope that has a level on it, or in my case, this pick rail uh, has a bubble level in the back, I can now see how level am I in relation to the ground, uh, the horizon, where I'm shooting. So now I have that little bit of reference to say, okay, I'm looking down at the bubble right now. I am dead level um, as opposed to if something happened where I shifted and I'm on level, I could be at a little bit of a can. I can see, well, well, you know, that little bit of a angle off being unlevel uh, could throw me, could, could throw how I'm shooting, how I, you know, how I hit the target, um, all of those little factors that come into uh, precision, precision shooting, which I'm not at that level. I do this for fun. So, but it's nice to know the capability is there. I'm somebody who would rather have and not need than need and not have. So um, if you're like me or like that, you want to have better stuff with more capability, then maybe this is the way you go. You could still mount this underneath if you wanted to and flip the whole thing around. Um, but I think that's sort of uh, defeating the purpose of the wide stance uh, because of the, the higher the gun is on that, that point, the less stable or uh, the easier it'll be uh, for you to have some sort of weird uh, issue. So I prefer it over top. I think it looks cool. I think you get a better platform there. And then it's also just easy to remove if you didn't want to use it, uh, throw it in a bag or something for transport. So let's do that right now. All right, so just with uh, this knob here, you're going to unloosen it. And then there's a button on the side where the whole thing just pops right out and you can store it take it off the gun and easily pop it back in. So let's do that. Just gonna unloosen this thing and that also obviously just makes it much looser. Clipping this little tab here, the whole thing, whole thing just pops out. So that makes it very convenient. And even though it folds closed, just like a standard on the side M-Lock um, bipod is gonna fold, I like how it's just a quick detach. I mean, you might not have a big bag or a bag that's gonna accommodate all of your stuff on the gun. Um, so it's really nice that a big bipod like this is just easily removed. The base, it's a pick rail attachment base. Um, what you'll see here is because the RPR, uh, if you're familiar with the RPR, is M-Lock all the way around, um, there's no pick rail on the top, which I think most uh, over the bore bipods are made for, you know, obviously pick rail. Um, so since there isn't pick rail built in, I had to use an M-Lock uh, pick rail, but the problem with M-Lock pick rail, mostly, unless you pay more money for um, something like Arasaka or whatever, and don't just use one of the cheap uh, Magpul ones, 
Uh, they're like a high profile. So to get a lower profile, to get it closer to the gun, you would have to spend more money to get a lower profile. So this sits pretty high as it is. You can probably see there the, the pick rail sits high, then this sits higher still. So I had to go with a riser uh, for the scope. So let's talk about what I'm doing with that and why I did that and if I really needed to do that. All right, so you'll see here that I'm using risers for the scope. Um, some people don't like to stack, you know, adapters, risers, or whatever because it could throw off your, you know, alignments. Uh, people don't like to, to stack things because there's more things to go wrong when you're stacking, I guess. But in my view, pick rail stacking, as long as you've, you know, used Loctite, you, you torque it down correctly, um, especially on something like a 22, and, you know, I'm, you're not going to have that issue. So uh, I used a riser. So I used a half inch riser on the front and the back and I just made it because again, if you know the Ruger Precision, the pick rail that comes on the top is really not that long. I mean, this thing, it could really have made this better uh, engineering in a longer pick rail, like bring this out another five, six inches to accommodate bigger scopes, more stuff, um, you know, whatever. So like right now I got the scope and I'm running my uh, dope card on the pick rail in the middle here it fits but I got no room for nothing else uh, there's other ways to get around different things if you got to mount other stuff but um, I mean it works for me but just barely you'll see with the two risers all the way to the front and all the way to the back um, it just makes it where I have the scope ring set up so it's mounted on the last lug in the back here on the pick rail and the front lug and on the uh, front of this pick rail now i could have adjusted the scope to bring that back to kind of get it more centered but there just wasn't a lot of space left here and i really didn't want the rings up against the scope body uh, so it works i mean it's still locked in it's still in a groove um, so it's not going anywhere it just eh, it kind of looks a little silly with that tiny bit of overhang did i need to put the riser on you're gonna say well steve yeah you need to put the riser on because you can see the scope here is interfering with the bipod mount, uh, the overboard bipod mount over here. So you're probably thinking you're gonna have a big obstruction in your objective lens looking down range. Well, because this starts at a five power, um, you're already zoomed in. So I thought the same. Before I, I put the riser on, if you remember from my first video, the scope was almost touching the rail. So it was really low. So this thing was like halfway, just about in the way of the scope. I'm like, well, there's, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to see it. And actually, it was not in the way at all. I had uh, no issue seeing anything. I hadn't shot with it, but just looking through the scope, there was no obstruction. Everything was fine. And, you know, come to realize it's because you're already times five in, you're already zoomed in, so you're, you're missing that. It's, it's not in your field of view at that time. But I still wanted to rise it up and or lower the pick, the pick rail mount. So I have not bought a low profile pick rail pick rail mount for this yet but I still may do that I just think I want to keep it lower to the gun and then uh, I rose the scope up with uh, bigger scope rings and then the risers so let's talk about why I went with uh, the bigger scope rings uh, and these scope rings in particular all right so if you watch my most recent video on this scope and ring setup you'll know uh, that I'm running the discovery scope with their discoveries upgraded uh, scope rings and there's a couple reasons why I wanted to do that. And the ones I had on there before were the lower, the lower ones. These are the higher ones. The ones on there before were uh, a 1.26 rise. These are a 1.45 rise. So I wanted to get that little bit extra height, um, even still with the riser. Uh, again, it's a 34 millimeter tube. And these are 70, 75 aluminum scope rings. And I wanted to just quick go over these scope rings and why I chose the upgraded ones versus the ones that came uh, in the box with the scope. So on the surface, they look pretty similar. The main differences between the ones that come inside uh, the kit with the scope and these upgraded ones is mainly the uh, 7075 aluminum out of these. Uh, but the other things that make it more upgraded is the hardware on these versus the hardware on these. And the sort of polished aluminum, what appears to be like an insert or machined in 
uh, to the scope ring themselves versus these. So these are a higher uh, scope ring, higher rise at 1.67 versus the 1.45 that's on here. But they're, in, 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 in all ways that I can see, a more robustly built scope ring. Uh, the hardware is thicker. It looks like a better material. These are smaller. Um, it just looks overall and feels overall that these are just a little less quality than these. And am I splitting hairs? Probably. Uh, side by side, you can tell the difference. Fit and finish. Uh, these have little locking lugs uh, here aside from just the screw. So they lock down in place and then you tighten them down. Uh, this does not have that. So these screws will not fit in here uh, just because they're a little bit bigger a little more robust um, and then like I said the lining on the inside here is just a standard whatever finish that is nitride finish uh, on the inside of these ones it's like a polished it, it appears to be like a polished aluminum um, it just looks looks of better quality to me uh, so I went with the slightly higher rise went with the UTG uh, half inch pick rail risers for the scope to bring it up a little higher, a couple reasons. One, to clear that obstruction, even though it wasn't obstructing. Uh, and two, just to set me up a little higher so I didn't feel like when I was shooting, I was like, my, my neck was all crouched down and I was in like an uncomfortable sit, um, position. So now with the cheek riser on the RPR, uh, then the scope sitting a little higher up, my head's in a more upright position, uh, more comfortable for me I've found and if you've spent a lot of time behind a precision rifle either either in prone or just sitting down you know that your neck can wear you, you definitely get that fatigue over time kind of having your neck stretched or sitting in a in a position like that so finding your sweet spot for you is going to be important for for long long-term shooting things like that all right so now that all that's over let's just take some shots um, I still need to get this thing truly sighted in get my dope card all set up uh, we got no ears here because we got the silencer on. Um, so let's do it. See what she see what she sounds like here. Oh, I'm right there. I've not sighted this thing in yet, but I'm just about an inch low. I'm about an inch low. At 25 yards. Right there. Times five, let's go into times ten. I could go just one click more. That's that's money. That's money right there. What I'll probably do at this point is I'm I'm dead I'm dead nuts at 25. I'll probably set my rev stop at this distance so I know this is where I need to be if I'm going from you know long range to uh, short range and I can set that rev stop down to all the way at 25. So I know if I'm out at 100, I need to come back in at 25. I just turn that bad boy down until it stops and uh, you know, you're good to go. I'll do that off camera, but what's nice again about the scope I talked about is that built-in rev stop, and I feel like you know, for the money, you just you can't beat the features this scope is getting you um, at this price point, like sub $400 around that price point. Again, the links will be below if you care to uh, check it out. It helps out the channel. Uh, it is affiliate link for that. But I like how I can just make those fine adjustments even like this, and I can I can see and, and make those adjustments and see exactly what I'm, I'm needing to do. Dead nuts. Dead, dead nuts right there. All right, guys, really, this is, it was the video, it's, it's more talking than shooting, but I feel like I don't want it to be too long. The main idea of this video was to go over uh, how I just set up the scope on the riser, 
and the overbore bipod uh, from UTG. I feel like it is a really good upgrade and something if you're if you're trying to get into this and really kind of want good stuff and really set up even a budget rifle like this is a Ruger Precision 22. I mean, it's not a 308, it's not a 65, it's not some fancy like Armalite or whatever pick your name brand uh, high-end precision rifle, uh, but it's a Ruger Precision and I've always been a fan of Ruger. Uh, I've liked this rifle since it came out. I got one and I love the plank. So 22 and getting dialed in, man, you can just shoot it all day and have fun. So being able to build this thing up was an awesome, fun journey. Uh, I did a whole build series on this rifle with all the upgrades. So check that out if you want to. I'll link those as well. I appreciate your support. Don't forget to check links below. And again, Steve, MP5 on the Instagrams. I'll see you next time.